Hello, everybody. Here we are tonight is DE. We're going to have lesson number six on repentance. Don Crow will narrate the beginning seven-minute video, and then we'll get to share. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Let's just uh, lift this session up in prayer. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for the opportunity to understand and get the revelation <clears throat> need to grow as disciples of your word. And as we look into following you and what it means to understand and exhibit repentance, we're uh, looking for enlightenment, enlightenment to understand more how your grace and mercy works. So thank you, Jesus, for your wonderful work on the cross, and we receive it. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And um, what we're going to do here is uh, listen to Don Crow for a minute, and uh, seven minutes to be exact, and then we'll get to open it up and do whatever we want. We have uh, some people attending the Trump rally. We have, uh, I almost missed this session because uh, I would have had to put my shutters up because we've got a hurricane knocking at the door and uh, a category four. You, you should have, Perry, if you would imagine, I went into, I just was thinking, hey, I'm on my way home from work. I'm going to grab something for dinner. Wrong idea. When I went into that Publix, there was a oh, million, yeah. there was no shopping carts left. The yeah. parking lot was completely full. When yeah. I get in there, there's nothing. The shelves are like, what happened? It was like, yeah. and, and this is all on a warning that isn't even yet. I mean, we're still two days out as far yeah. as knowing the landfall within any sense of accuracy. Right now, yeah, when, when you're two days away, anything can happen. You know, it's That's right. So I, I can't get over how these people are responding to this warning. And it's, I mean, this is, what is this name? This is with an H or? No, it's uh, named Matthew. I keep up with weather. I have a weather station and I keep up with weather pretty good. So I'm kind of interested in all that. So I've really been keeping the details of it. Well, tell me, how does, um, a, this is a category four. Right. And it's it's M. So that means this is like what? The, the 15th uh, name? Storm or yeah, right. They, they said it was a fifteenth. Uh, no, there's one out there right now named Nicole, but it's not gonna. It's just staying out there and it's small. It's not gonna even come this way. Yeah, because all the storms from this point in time, we didn't even see. I, they were never even to mention. I didn't even know their names. Yeah, so. because most of them didn't even have. Well, of course, that one that went up through Tallahassee and went up the, the uh, west yeah. coast of Florida. Right, I remember that. One. Um, other than that one, all the storms that were named this year, most people probably didn't pay attention unless there's somebody like me, you know, that's kind of yeah. interested in weather. That last year was Hurricane Joaquin. It was a named storm. It did all kinds of spins and loop the loops through the Bahamas yeah. and took out a big merchant ship. And I ended up doing some rescue work down there for that one. And with a buddy of mine who's um, Jimbo, he graduated with me from Jacksonville School. He's actually uh, has a ministry called um, God's Creations, uh, Adventures in God's Creations. And he takes you out to the Bahamas to see like the raw land over there. I mean, fishing and swimming with pigs, uh, yeah. you know, all kinds of crazy things he does out there in the Bahamas. And um What's fu funny is that he heard the storm was coming, and he I don't know what possessed him to do this. Apparently, he heard from the Lord, but he flew out there. He's in the Bahamas right now. Oh, and yeah. Just going through Cuba, he'll be he'll be in the middle of that storm by tomorrow, and there's, yeah. there's nowhere to put your plane. The hangars that they put the planes in are rickety. We saw hangars and all taken out, planes, hangars, everything. Yeah. And he yeah. flew out ahead of time, so I don't wow. know what he was thinking or what he's doing, but God bless him is what I have yeah. to say. Wow. I have another minister friend that's in, um, he's in the Dominican Republic. He just sent word, you know, pray for us. It's hitting hard. <coughs> They're having, <coughs> excuse me. Yeah. They're already showing the weather issues and what have you. So let's just do that for a minute and let's just lift up all those folks who are in the line of that storm. I experienced the category for Andrew in Florida, and it was devastating. It oh, was, yeah, that was a bad one. It was, uh, it's amazing. The devastation is intense with these huge, huge storms like this. And 
we just pray for the people in those populated areas that yeah. they, they, they use wisdom, get discernment, they, they, they take cover, they, they're safe, and that um, the Lord is um, already going to be there, but that they may seek that protection and, and, and head for that uh, covering so that they will be safe yeah. during that storm. Cause those storms are crazy. Now, Jerry is usually joins us, but she's in a, it's a madhouse down there. I saw the, the crowds in Arizona were tremendous. And there she is. She must have popped out. Wait a minute, Jerry, because that was just insane. That, that, that oh rally. My God. Did you actually oh, get the building? No. And I, I had tickets. I didn't think so. It, it was insane. It was tiring. There were so many people disappointed. I think it was a publicity stunt because they knew the building only held 7,000 people and they sold 20, 000, or gave away 20,000 tickets. Oh. But then at the end, here comes all this media and stuff. So I think it was kind of set up that way. Probably. But anyway, I'm here. Didn't know if you'd have class or not. You didn't get blown away yet? Well, they said it won't hit land till tomorrow. I actually put, uh, because I didn't know. I mean, I was working all day. But when I got home, I saw a little weather, you know, pencil drawing on the weather thing in my, in my phone. I says, uh-oh, this thing's landing right in our backyard. So I canceled the class for the preparation. And then I reopened it and deleted the post because it's just um, won't hit till tomorrow. So if, if anything, tomorrow may be an issue. But right now we're just, I mean, the stores are insane. I was just explaining that. They're just, it's just, it's like the last days. You go in through those stores, people will wipe the shelves clean. They're buying everything. But I was listening to a friend of uh, Lisa saying that she was in a Walmart and they were having fist fights for the water. I mean, it was, it's insane. Oh, it yeah. was insane. So I just filled my RV. I got like 60 gallons of water in it right now. And I, I, I mean, I'm self-sufficient. RV's full of the tank because I just came back from a trip. So if anything, I'll just jump in the RV. I got the generator, everything I need. I could just ride out of here if I need to. But, you know, it's just uh, the media doesn't – I mean, guys. you guys – what's his name? Uh, Scott or – <laughs> the, the governor, he, he went and got a national disaster for like every county on the, because uh, he's protecting the insurance companies, basically. Uh, you know, this I had a job today to pick up some furniture from a friend of mine who's selling this house, but they postponed, they delayed the closings, they delayed, so I told him, look, I'm not going to go crazy, but I'll just see you tomorrow. So it, it's the, the, all the closings right now are, you can't write insurance during this time because the, you know, the disaster and um, insurance is protected, you know, they protect it that way. But, but, you know, it's just, it's crazy what happens. I mean, if it was actually some kind of a disaster that was le legitimate, like, I mean, we, 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 we talk a little bit about end time stuff, not too much, but if you were to see something like a crash of the economy to the epic proportions of the days of the, mm -hmm. of, you know, the, the Great Depression, but I mean, seriously, like the Great Depression, these, this, we weren't even a, a fifth of that in our worst cases anyway. But the thing about it is, if, if there was ever something like that, I mean, people, hopefully they find their hearts because, man, they are just one for all and all for one. And here yeah. I come, man. It is sad. I mean, horn blowing at the at the gas stations, lines going out, blocking intersections and everything else. It's just, it is just, I mean, it's crazy to watch. It's yeah. crazy to watch. So, you know, we pray for there's, all these people. Go ahead. I was going to say, there's a lot of crazy stuff going on right now. I, that, um, I guess it's Matthew that's up there where you're at. Is that who it is? So yeah, hurricane, yeah, Matthew or something. Yeah, um, Matthew I got Moore. to see it. I don't know if you saw it, but I got to see it from a satellite looking down on it. Yeah, it's huge. Oh my gosh! Yeah, I had no idea. Yeah, I it mean, that's amazing. what they look like. I mean, that's what serious ones look like, and we've had our share. I mean, I've been here in Florida since 1982. 
and I worked with my company actually. We 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 teamed together. Uh, it wasn't my company. The company I worked for at the time, JM Family, the Toyota distributor. We rented trucks. Uh, we did all kinds of things, and and it was like an army zone down there for Andrew in Miami. It was like they had the National Guard. They took over golf courses and just blanketed it with camouflage and military vehicles and you had looting going on you had people robbing people's houses you had you know all kinds of people buried under rubble and medical issues that no access to their homes you know it was it's it gets severe it gets severe in these situations just last year i was in joaquin and it was a in the bahamas i mean we have infrastructure i mean the united states or whatever even donald trump's talking about how bad it is but it's it's we have infrastructure. You go to the Bahamas, these people are relying on a solar panel that they picked up from a, a mail order catalog to get electricity. And, you know, when the hurricane goes through there and just takes out literally everything, even the house, which is made of sticks with, you know, tied together with rope in most cases, not even nails, it is absolutely humiliant humbling it's a humbling experience let me just tell you and um but you know these things here we're just pray for one another lift up one another and let's um hopefully get in the hearts of people to stop trying to kill one another hallelujah okay i was just saying this rally i mean you know people (laughs) were i mean they wanted in those doors and they were gonna get in there no matter what about the, crazy. Time, about the time you text me that you were there, Donald Trump, I caught him on a live feed on a Facebook post. He's saying, yeah, this place is, it's unbelievable. It's packed. We, we didn't expect this kind of a turn up, but wait a minute. It's pretty much what we've seen at every rally so far. And is there anyone wow. here? He, t- he says, is there anyone I, here that would like to stand up and give their seat I to saw some of the people outside waiting? And it was like, no. <laughs> yeah, and I was out. We were outside. I heard him say that. And we were the ones outside looking at that Jumbotron, watching yeah. him on the Jumbotron. And I wanted to go in there and strangle him for saying that because I had tickets. What are they doing giving away too many tickets when people can't get in there? Uh-huh. It was a publicity stunt, but oh well. You know, my grand I took my grandson and oh, he man. wasn't all that impressed. How old? Fourteen. Oh, and yeah. I wanted him to see what it was about, you know. All he was going by was what he heard at school and Well, know. I mean, he got he must have got a feel or a sense, just the environment, how crazy it is, you know. He did. I'm he sure. did. And he got real tired too. We were there for <laughs> Hours. Yeah. All but, right. Well, let's start up our video and we'll move on and see what else the Lord, good Lord has us to, us to talk about and minister about here. This is lesson six. Once again, repentance. And uh, this is discipleship evangelism. And it is with Don Crow. I was on the streets of Colorado Springs one night witnessing. In fact, we have discipleship evangelism weekly outreaches every Wednesday night in Colorado Springs. And I was talking to a young man, probably 19, 20 years old, somewhere in there. And his name was Mike. And he really didn't want me to share with him the truths of Jesus Christ. And so finally, I just asked him, I said, have you ever heard anything like this? And he said, yes, I had made a some kind of profession of faith or something like that when I was in jail one time. But obviously, that one-time profession of faith wasn't bearing any fruit in his life at this time. And why is that true of so many people? Well, we're going to talk about the subject of repentance. Let me tell you, let me illustrate this by a little parable about Sally and Johnny. See, Johnny's sitting in the church one day, and the preacher is really preaching. 
And he's, the preacher says, I know someone here today needs to be saved. And all of Johnny's friends, you know, point, say, it's Johnny, it's Johnny. And the preacher kept saying, there's someone here that needs to be saved. So eventually, they help Johnny, they escort him down the aisle. And Sally also went forward and said a little prayer. They, said a, they repeated a prayer after a, a preacher. And you know, Sally's life was transformed. But you know, Johnny's life never changed. They said the same prayer. They did what the pastor told them to do. And yet one person was transformed. Sally was transformed. And Johnny, his life never changed. Now why is that? It's because he bypassed the really teaching or what the Bible says about repentance. You see, the Bible says that repentance is not perfection. It's not like a New Year's resolution. It's not like you do everything right. Repentance means there's a change of heart, and that change of heart causes a person to move a totally new, complete, different direction. Now, the reason they're moving a different direction is because they've had a change of heart. You see, Sally's heart was changed. She meant business when she talked to the living Christ, and Christ met her there. Johnny went through emotion, but his heart never changed. This is what repentance is. I'm going to quote from Acts chapter 26 and verse 18. It illustrates the message of the Apostle Paul, Jesus Christ, gave him a commission what to preach. And this is what Jesus Christ, the resurrected Jesus Christ, told the Apostle Paul that he needed to preach. And I'm reading from Acts 26, verse 18. He said, I want you to open their eyes. See, the God of this world has blinded people's eyes. He's talking about his spiritual eyes. I want people's eyes to be opened. And then Jesus told him this to turn people, to turn them from darkness to light, to turn them from the power or authority of Satan unto God, that they might receive the forgiveness of their sins. And as we read in Acts 26, Paul said, I wasn't disobedient to this heavenly vision. But I've went everywhere telling the Jews and the Gentiles, in verse 20, to repent and turn to God and prove their repentance by what they do. You see, when people change, there's a change in their life, and they begin to move a different direction. That's the fruit of repentance. Repentance itself is the change of heart, the change of mind. And that change of heart, that change of mind, moves them a new direction. Repentance is not perfection. It's a new direction. And as the Scripture tells us here, it's a turning you can't turn to something until you turn from something. And in repentance, you're turning to God, to His grace, to His mercy, to His forgiveness, to His person. And you're turning at the same time away from Satan, His ways, His bondage, all of these kind of things to God. So, I don't know if you've gone through what I would call an artificial little prayer in which your life never changed. If that's you, you need to examine your heart. Did you really turn to God? Did you turn to Him completely and wholly and totally? Did you really turn to God? Did you really turn to His person? Did you really turn to His mercy? Did you really turn away from Satan, from sin, from that kind of thing? If you haven't, you need to turn to God, away from Satan, from darkness, and unto light. And even though there's a, an initial time that re repentance takes place in the life of the believer, I believe that God is asking us, as even as Christians, to continue a life of repentance. You see, I need to make decisions today. And some of those decisions that I need to make today involve me turning away from the flesh, 
turning away from temptation, fleeing temptation, and turning to God in His ways. And so, repentance, even though it's a, an initial one-time act of the believer, it's an attitude because of the impartation of the new nature in the life of a Christian that causes that believer to constantly always want to turn to God and to His ways and away from the enemy and His ways. Always turning to light, away from darkness, to God and away from Satan. So if you've never had that change of heart, there's only one way to get it. And that is to ask God to give you a repentant heart a repentant attitude. For Acts 17.30 says this, God has commanded all men everywhere to repent. Mm -hmm. Well, there you have it. <clears throat> Any comments? I don't know how that happens. What? You know, like he said, two people come and um, one has it and or one accepts Jesus and the other one doesn't. Because oh, one, um, one has change in their life and the other one doesn't. Yeah, one has fruit and one doesn't. Right. It. I was so. Once I became a Christian, I was. It was powerful in my life. I mean, it was. <clears throat> really powerful so the ones that can turn their back on it i don't i seriously just don't understand that well, i have it in my own family so i know what happens um, i really worry about that cough you know that kurt say that again i'm sorry i'm worried about that cough Oh, it's going away. <laughs> um, I was going to say that um, <clears throat> I had heard a lot of preachers, you know, what, what I call foaming at the mouth. <laughs> they're they're going to it, you know. They're preaching and repent, repent, blah blah blah, and yeah, that's the gates of hell wide open, and all this, and that, you know. And it was, I don't know how much longer, you know, I started studying the Bible after I got saved, you know, going to churches, reading, listening to tapes, just everything, going to lots of meetings. And um, and then finally, you know, that's when I finally began to realize the meaning of that word, re re repent. And I, I tell you, I try, to, I, don't, I try to stay away from what I call religious language. Now, if I'm with a bunch of people, and that's the way they talk. I can converse, but when I'm talking to people on the street, yeah, I refrain from religious mannerisms and religious languages because, <clears throat> anyhow, a lot of reasons. But repent it means a change. Okay, he mentioned a change of heart. Well, only God makes the change of heart. You sure. know, we're wondering why do some people and why don't some people. <clears throat> I don't know that there's a solid answer. I mean, you can find biblical answers, but I don't know if there's a real explanation. I mean, I remember these two guys one time, and I was talking to them about Jesus and just a simple message of salvation and led them to the point of making a decision, and okay. And I said, and I always really emphasize, hey, this is your decision. Don't be saying anything for my benefit. I said, this isn't going to benefit me. I try to almost, in a sense, talk them out of it in the sense that, that it's got to be something God's drawn them to do. And so that's what I did. And so the two guys said, um, yeah, okay, okay. So we prayed a prayer, common prayer. And I had a sense, I guess you'd call it a sense, that the one guy, they, all said, they both said the same words repeated. Them. And, and I just had a sense, I, I was wondering about this guy. And I won't go into the whole details. But on down the line, after about a week or two, and I was still having contact with these guys, it was plainly plain to see that that, that sense I got was accurate because he really, uh, whatever, you know, he said the words, but it didn't happen in his heart. But the other guy did. And, you know, he began to develop um, fruit, 
for that. So I don't right. know, you know, repent means change. And in a sense, it's change your, change your way of thinking. And basically in those days, the Jews were, you know, they were all the, that was all the law and everything. And so they were saying, change your way of thinking. This isn't the way it is anymore. Amen. Jesus has came, and you've got to change your way of uh, how you're looking and perceiving God, because this isn't the way it is. And so there had to have been a, uh, that repent meant change your way of thinking or how you're looking at God. Amen. Amen. You nailed it there, um, Sperry. I guarantee you, in my opinion, you did. Because, you know, if you looked at, repentance in the terms of a lot of believers today and you were talking about religious words and, and I'm right there with you because you know religion to me has done more harm than good in most cases in terms of how it's uh, been experienced by yeah. by the brethren and how it's been experienced by even the body of Christ because religion just uh, it, it nullifies the cross basically is what it does yeah. so when you look at um, this word repentance, what it's been, the way it's been couched or presented in the body or in the world, I should say, by believers. And I'm talking about believers, either religious or non-religious, you know, just believers in general. It, it, there's almost like two camps. There's a camp that recognizes, you know, John the Baptist used to preach, preach the word about repentance and who he is talking to and his audience and how the Jews understood religion, or I should say the law, and they understood sin. You know, Jesus was the one that was going to change all of that. And that's what he said, that they needed to start thinking differently, just as you explained. But then there's another camp that I've seen, like the other day I was driving in the neighborhood and there was a, a, a church group. It must have been just a radical Friday. I don't know what they call it, but they were all pulled over on the side of the busiest road in town here on a big intersection, downtown Port St. Lucie. And they had their Bibles in their hands. Each of them had a Bible and they had picket signs and they were telling them, repent, the end times are here. And, 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 and really I was like, how is this effective? Right. How is this effective? No, I don't understand. It scares people. people. <laughs> it just scares people. That's all. You know, I, I wrote a little article about zeal, the word zeal. And, and, and you look at zeal, and usually it's couched in terms of religious zeal. But zeal just means, you know, any kind of uh, height, emotion, you know, any type of uh, – you know, you could have zeal for the Broncos. You know, I mean, I'm just saying you have, you know, zeal. And what happens, I think people, it's almost like, you know, you got to wave something under their nose and have them wake up and come out of that ether because they're so in, caught up in their own zeal that I really think they're unconscious to, to, to really what they're doing. And, and it's almost like I think that to a certain degree, you could almost feel sorry for the Sadducees and, and Pharisees in terms of they were had zeal. I mean, they were unconscious to Jesus. They didn't even see him. And they were writing scripture and they were, they under, they, they wrote this. The, the scribes actually marked every mark, meant something. And they knew what it meant, but they didn't see Jesus in the scriptures. It, it, it's like, I, I really know the nature of God in my heart has a sense of peace and that peace can take that zeal and change it and make it appropriate. It really could. And, and what happens is like here, this is where he was talking about people that use repentance to become born again. And if you read here what Jesus talks about being born again, he says, And verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. <coughs> the idea of repentance that Jesus is proclaiming here or trying to get this 
Sadducee, Pharisee, Nicodemus was a well-known uh, scribe. He, he was a he was a he was an uh, attorney. You know, he was like one of the big law um, people. In order to get him to recognize, to understand the born again process, he never used the word repent. The word repent is not even in this this whole transcript. What he tried to explain to him was what it meant between water and of the spirit. This idea of spiritual things is what it's talking about. Understanding things spiritually, where the law is a carnal thing. The law is a works thing. The law is just using, you know, your own sense of, revelation between the carnal experiences of your life and change that because that is death to be carnally minded is death these people were on a road to death right now without understanding spiritual things so jesus is explaining the born again experience so where don crow was explaining how is it that someone could be born again and have no fruit because they're not understanding spiritual things, period. Uh -huh. Spirituality has nothing to do with what their process entailed because this whole thing speaks about understanding spiritual things. He even talks about it. I think in this translation, it talks about, you see that leaf blowing and uh, <laughs> let me see. I marvel at the, you must be one. Here, the wind bloweth where it listed. It, it says here in verse 9, it says, The wind bloweth where it list, lists, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but can not tell whence it comes. It, 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 exactly the things we've been talking about with faith. You see, we are saved by grace through faith. The faith is the spiritual side of this understanding. And that is what I think a lot of people think, you know, standing on the corner with a Bible telling people to repent does not give someone the warm and fuzzies to think about spiritual things. <laughs> I mean, to think, you know, and, and, and as a matter of fact, the way that they're approaching those people I wouldn't be surprised in their carnal selves. They, they wouldn't say such things as ridiculous as what Nicodemus said here. How can a man go into his mother again and be born? I mean, can you blame them? You know, because they're not even mentioning spiritual things. You know, I, I think that where we missed a mark in understanding the idea of repentance <coughs> is that repentance is a change, but actually you can go further. You can, and I'm going to exercise the liberty here. In my opinion, you could go further and just say, don't, don't think of things all. There is a spiritual world or a spiritual reality out there. And I need you to grasp that. Now, you can take, and, and I have these conversations on a very high intellectual level, well, as high as you can get with someone who's a Buddhist, but the reality is they'll have a conversation with you very much in tune with spiritual things. But because religion has created this weirdness with spiritual things in the religious side that tend to deal with all the carnal problems like they deal with homosexual, like they deal with uh, the Bibles on the corner of the street, like they deal with going to church and, you know, being proper and never sinning and watch. You know, there's a lot of ways that we deal with spiritual things that just won't turn people on. And they go to things like Buddha because Buddha's like, hey, it's actually cool. Look at Madonna and Kanye West and all these other people with this Illuminati thing. And all, 
These people recognize a spiritual thing. It's perverted. Granted, it's a perversion of spiritual things. But the idea is we have opportunity to minister. We have opportunity to present the gospel. And it's like you said, Sperry, there was a scripture you used which says it's the love of the Lord that leadeth to repentance. That's how repentance happens. And the love of the Lord is the love. It's a spiritual thing, not like Kanye West and Madonna and Illuminata and all those other things, not like Buddha. It's a spiritual thing that actually is reaching out to you to love you. Whereas every one other of those things is you have to try to reach up to a spiritual thing. This is the only, and we got the best gig in town, hallelujah, because this is the only program where there's a God that loves so much. He sent his son and he's telling you, I want to love you just the way you are. I want to love you. How are you telling people? And that's a spiritual experience, hallelujah. That Mm -hmm. will take and create repentance because what you don't create repentance by saying repent or burn you know that you create repentance by showing the love of god to you that's how it is it's the love of the lord that leadeth a man to repentance then once you repent it you're now you are you're repenting of one thing to understand the love of God, which is a spiritual thing. That's why Jesus says here, that which is spirit is spirit, that which is flesh is flesh. Because you cannot try to create a flesh moment and create a repented heart that's going to lead to fruit as a born-again believer. It just does not happen carnally. It does not happen in the flesh. It happens spiritually when you get a hold of that love that will lead you to repentance and create a life that is a commitment to something you love, not to something you don't understand, not to something that you don't even know really what it is. You just heard it was a good thing. Just you have to create in your heart a love that says, hey, I'm going to want to hear about the Lord seven o'clock every day, no matter what. I'm going to want to do this because that's, that's how disciples are because you can't even make a disciple. I had this, you remember that guy, Clint, that was with us the other day, Clint, he does a ministry. And if he has private meetings, in other words, you have to get in through his meeting and then he accepts you and then you are in the meeting. But he's surprised because he has probably over 80% fallout. And I'm like, what do you mean? Well, people just don't have the faith to continue. That faith comes from that understanding of God's love, that faith that creates a repented heart a faith that'll lead you to continue. You see, God didn't say, go make disciples of every man. He said, go make the disciples of faithful men and women. You got to be, a, you know, you're casting your pearls amongst the swine. You can't lead a horse to water and make him drink, if you will. You know, the idea of faithfulness is because you have an understanding of the actual, you've had a repented heart. You've experienced something that is within you in a real way. It's within you. Every man has been given this measure of faith. It's been dealt to every person. They just need to put the connect the dots. You know, I always knew there was something. There had to be something more to this life. I, I couldn't quite figure out what it was. But, you know, I think you just led me to the love of the Lord. Hallelujah. You didn't throw a Bible at me while I'm driving by in my car. You didn't try to tell me that I just got to go make my way, brave it, get amongst all those people and say what he says at the altar. No, there was a, the I got it moment 
that just said, huh, maybe there is something more. Maybe there is something more than just what's in my peanut little head. Maybe there is something more than just what I see every day carnally. That's what Jesus is trying to do here to Nicodemus. He's trying to explain to him, you know, it, it just, I don't understand why you can't see the wind, but you know it's there. You can't see spiritual things, but you know it's there. And, and, and that can take you into a heart that's repentant. That, the love of the Lord, can conquer. Look, they say that th th there's a group. Right now it's really big with the seven mountain, um, seven mountain mandate. And, and I, I'm totally in favor of it. <coughs> it's a place where we should be influencing not by accident. We should be influencing the world on purpose. And what I mean by that word on purpose is on God's purpose for you. Figure out your purpose and influence the world on purpose. And once we get to a place where we're influencing the world on purpose, now with this seven mountain mandate and with this revelation, Love, because they, they, they'll say that you can't conquer a mountain with love. You have to conquer a mountain with influence. You have to get in there and you have to, well, you won't get in there to do anything, which you should be doing on purpose, unless you get a revelation of love to start your motor and get you fulfilled and try to reach out and know what's your purpose, not that God has given you, not the purpose that you're trying to get God to bless because you think you're really good at it. Yeah. The yeah. idea behind figuring it out is you're going to need love to start that process. So really, that's why Jesus says he is love, you know, because you need Jesus to start that process. And you got to get that awareness here at the very beginning. That's what it says. You must be born again. Hallelujah. But the idea behind being born again is not only that you get to go to heaven and get your sins forgetting, forgot, forgiven, but what you get as far as that atoning work, everything about the cross that's been to you is favor, doors opening. Walking in greatness is more than a conqueror. You're getting the full toolbox of what you're going to need if you ever want to hope to have influence anywhere. So you're going to ultimately have to stand on love to recognize your first, your calling, your giftings, those things that God has. A, you know, each of us is different, but God He's the only one that knows the plans that he has for you. And those mm -hmm. plans are going to come forward through your acknowledgement of this whole process to get you started. Because if you're not here understanding spiritual things, you might think you're the best baker in town and you're going to become a baker. God didn't want you to be a baker. Maybe he wanted you to go visit a baker and eat some good cake, but he didn't <laughs> want you to be a baker. He wanted you to be a plumber because you did a heck of a job plumbing. You know, but you know, it just matters what God's leading you to do, and you have to discern these things. Mm -hmm. And you can't get a heart for discernment. You can't get a place for discernment. You can't even discern the body. Hallelujah. If you don't have a revelation of what the cross is about and what this whole process is of being born again, you know, and, and again, I'm preaching at this point, but the reality is what is going on with the body of Christ when they get stuck in step one bashing people for them to get a revelation of turning to God and telling them God is love, love, love. But 
you know, stop loving me so hard. You're hurting me. Mm. You know? it, it's yeah. like, it, it's like, hold on a minute. I need more than that. And then rightfully so. Explain to me, what am I supposed to do? Go back in my mother's womb and come back out? <laughs> How does a grown man do that? You know, listen, these people aren't stupid, but they said stupid things. When someone says something stupid to you, it's not always because they're stupid. It could be because what you're telling them isn't making sense and they think it's stupid, so they're talking stupid. You know, these things can only be discerned, and that's why Jesus is clear. That which is spirit is spirit. That which is flesh is flesh. Well, Let me not, I'm sorry if I confused you. Simple. I'm sorry yeah. if I confused you. It, 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 you don't want to confuse people. Jesus reasoned with the people. Why? Even the disciples said, why do you speak in parables? If you don't understand the parable, I mean, whoa, what am I doing here? Did I miss, did, did, you must have missed the whole part of what I've been saying all along. Because you've got to relate to the people, you know? You know, shall we bring down fire and bring up? No, no, no. That's not what I'm here for. You, 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 let me help you with this whole thing. We're trying to relate to these people. We're not trying to kill them. The fire. <laughs> you know, and, and yes, there's going to be division. I didn't come to bring peace that way. I've become to bring mothers against fathers. fathers against, it, it, it's just going to happen that way because what they see and they have to get for themselves. You don't do this as a group. What you do is you practice it as a group, but to get it up front. You, in other words, when Don Crow said, hey, his friends were all around him and pointing at him and all that, you can't go up there with your group of buddies and say, come on, God, go ahead, smack me down. Give me my born again experience. It's Ugh. never going to work. It's for the little yeah. old woman sitting by herself to figure out this part. And then once you get this part, then you become an adopted son into the family. You're adopted. you got all kinds of brothers and sisters. Now you're a family. But you can't get there from here. I can't, you know, hey, he hangs out. You know, look at what happened to the sons of Sceva. Oh, I cast you out in the name of, uh, you know, the guy that Paul talks about all the time. And uh, I think his name was Jesus. They, they beat him up, took off his clothes, and sent him out because it's something you have to experience and recognize for yourself. That spirit, which is spirit, and that understanding of a great God who, even when I was still a sinner, did all of these things, sacrificing his son. Wait a minute, you know? And get a revelation that I might, you know, based on what you're saying, I might want to know more about this guy. You know, I might want to. And, 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 and even an atheist that you're speaking to about God may come against you, but he's already been given that measure of faith he needs to break that. I, I heard Arthur Menchez speak about it in a conversation he had with a guy in an airplane. He was stuck in the plane for like eight hours with someone next to him. And he's had his Bible and his teachings and he's reading and doing his thing with his headphones. And <clears throat> they got into a brief conversation about what do you, what do you do? And he tells him what he does. And the other guy says, Oh yeah, no, I don't believe in any of that. That's just crazy. You don't believe in what? I don't believe in God. Well, what explain to me, God, he describes God only by his experience. Romans 14, 1. I don't know your history. His history gave him a revelation 
or the most perverted revelation and understanding of God based on what he saw on the news, television, friends that are Christians that have been bashing him with the Bible for years, kids that are chewing drugs when their father's a priest, all the different things that he believes that God is the worst. And Arthur says, wow, you know what? If, if that was God, I wouldn't believe in him either. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, people have, all of them have, well, some of them have um, weird thoughts of what and who God is. And I kind of, when I'm um, <coughs> introducing someone or, or trying to tell someone about God, and they, they you know, they always bring up the Bible like the Bible is just so big and I don't understand it and I don't get it. And, you know, it's hard for me to understand. I'll never be able to read that much. And tell them, look at break the Bible in half. And the first half is going to give you the heart of God, of who God is and his heart for things, the things that he doesn't like and the things that he does like. And then the second part is going to tell us what he expects from us now after he sent his son to die for us, how we should live now. It's not a hard thing. They have some really simple um I read the New Living translation because I just like that translation, but right. some of the others are a little difficult for me. Um, but um, that's, it's just, if you could just get them into the Bible, I think the Holy Spirit sucks them in after that. But most people, do you know that most Christians don't read their Bibles? Yeah, I think that whole idea of the Bible, again, and, and, and you talking about, well, that's the New Living is a paraphrase translation, basically, just like the message and a couple of others. Then you have, you know, the the ones that those that like this version here, King James, that ye must not bless the one blow, you know. And let me just say something about that, because ultimately this this teaching that we're doing, this study is called Discipleship evangelism evangelism is part of the title because when you're evangelizing not everyone gets to stand up on a podium because his name is Billy Graham and they all came to see what he has to say we evangelize one person at a time I mean wherever yeah. we are and ultimately, the translation that I use when evangelizing, you see, I read a multitude of translations. This is why I like Bible Gateway. I pull down a little menu, and I can choose a bazillion different translations, the same scripture, and I can figure yeah, it out. I, I use a lot of them. <clears throat> Amen. And, but ultimately, when I'm evangelizing, guess what translation I use? The Kurt Barreto translation. Right. The Kurt Barreto translation. Yeah, that's what I was talking about a while ago. You don't have to give them all that religious. Hallelujah. Yeah, it's exactly what Sperry said. It's exactly that. Because what they're going to get isn't a translation that they're going to read anywhere else. The Holy else. Spirit is what they're going to get. Well, well, hey, you know what? Basically, you may come to feel comfortable with the New Living Translation, as the Spirit leads you. I mean, because really, I've read, you know, through and listened to and done a lot of different translations. <coughs> but depending on the word that the Holy Spirit's given me to listen to, the message that I'm led to, 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 to meditate on, Mm -hmm. It may be any number of any one of them that speaks to me in the yeah. language that pricked my heart in a way to look more. It, it could have been any one of them. I've gotten 
message translations that I just fall in love with. And I like Romans 14, 1, I just quoted that one to you. I don't care which translation you read it. To me, it only speaks to me the way I need to hear it if I read it in the message Bible. And that doesn't happen all the time because some message Bibles translations are totally off base to what I really want to get out of that translation, which is going to be 100% King James all the way. You know, so yeah. it depends. I, I really does. The spirit will lead me and guide me as to where I feel peace about what I'm hearing. <clears throat> You know? Well, sometimes you're looking for a different way to say the same thing. And that I've got four different Bibles here, and I'll go from one to the other right. to try to get my answer, you know, because right. maybe this one doesn't do it. You know, maybe general, it doesn't get the, the only thing that's gonna the only thing that's gonna sound genuine to the person who you're trying to minister to is the Geraldine Leach translation. Yeah. Because that's the one that's going to ring. It's going to just ring true. Otherwise, you'll be like the son of Sceva, trying to explain to them, oh, that guy, um, you know, uh, his name Paul, and he talks about this guy, G and the other guy, Jesus. That's the one I'm talking about. That's the one I'm trying. No, it's not your revelation. You make it yours, however it need be, the spirit will give you that download and you that's what's called walking in the spirit. You're not walking right. in the flesh. You're not walking with the hold on a minute. That's uh article seven, nine, fourteen of verse six of five. You know, that stuff to me, I, I can't do it. You asked me one time, how do you how does Andrew remember these scriptures? Look, the, the address. The, yeah, the address. I mean to me. Well, if there was no addresses, I'd be just as fine. Because even yeah, when that, I was yeah, – go ahead. No, I was just saying that's the way I am. I, mean, I can't always quote the number, but I can usually tell you the basics of, of what it says. Andrew says that he is able to do that because of uh, the fact that he had that old Bible that fell all apart and he lost most of it. And he had, he had to, he was preaching to the church, the little church. You might, you already know that probably, don't you? Yes. That's why yeah. he didn't have it all. He said he had to, because he was, he didn't tell nobody <laughs> he didn't have all the Bible. <laughs> I know. He didn't have a full Bible. He could, wow. he, was, he was blessed when he got one, you know? Wow. And he doesn't highlight his Bible either because he says when he used to highlight <laughs> his Bible, um, you know, he would look for the highlighted version of it, and then he wouldn't know the address. It was, wasn't was until he stopped highlighting his Bible, then that's when he actually learned the address of what he was reading. Uh -uh. Personally, I'm not good with addresses. I can give you the yeah. general direction, but, you know. I, I'll, um, give you, I'll give you a quick story. I, I was in the mortgage business, and the reason why I'm going to use this name is because Dusty Lashbrook, he was my boss, and he actually was a boss of the whole company. And sometimes he comes on to say hello and what have you. He's working with my website. But the thing about it is that underwriters, these are people that used to write our, uh, underwrite our mortgages. I do a loan based on a loan program. You're supposed to know all the programs. And the programs are like a Bible. It's everything that you can and can't do for that particular mortgage. And I would read them, give them a cursory read, you know, and get the gist of it and understand what the, the letter of law intends to say in that thing. But I can't remember exactly the, 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 the line and the page number and all that. So he, he, he was amazed. The underwriters were amazed, actually, because – they would tell him, look, Kurt's writing a loan and it doesn't fit the program and what have you. And then he'd, he'd say, Read, give it back to him. And then I'd get the loan back and I'd say, listen, you're wrong. They'd be like, look, I'm an underwriter. Like, I'm a scribe. I'm a Pharisee. I have the programs here. I have the big, thick books with all the things. And that's wrong. I say, no, if you go to the outlines that we use as loan officers and go like, I don't know, it's in the middle somewhere, halfway down the page, you're going to see where it talks just about this point, the way I wrote it. And lo and behold, they'd go out there and find it, just like I said, 
and have to look it up in their big thick book somewhere else that they never even thought it was and then come back and apologize. Because again, yeah. the way my mind works differently than someone else's in terms of how I get it. So I am in, in love with all the different, you know, script uh, uh, renditions, if you will, of the Bible, different types of Bible. Certain ones speak to me in a certain way. And, and, and that's just the way I think that it's, it, you know, there's a, there's, a, there's a term that's called exogesis and isogesis. And it's exogenic and isogenic. What it means is you interpret the scripture exogenically is word for word. It's, it, what it says is what it says. And then isogetic means that you imply different things to the scripture to make it fit what you're trying to say. And most of the people say that's taboo. That's wrong. You should never do that. You should really, the scripture corrects itself, which is absolutely true. But when you're communicating with the Holy Spirit and you have questions and he has answers and he's trying to explain things to you, guess what? You use both things when you're communicating. When you're communicating, you're going to listen you're going to try to reason, you're going to try to understand, and you're going to use different versions of the Bible to communicate to yourself through the Holy Spirit to get that revelation and make it yours just by the words it's using. You know, I'm from New York. You're from Arizona. Sperry's from the deep south. We may say y'all, and it could mean a different thing. I mean, it just, you know... This is like an accent, in my opinion. I mean, in a certain way, you may not understand what they're saying. <laughs> it's the same language, but I just need to hear it a different way. That's all. And, and, and I think that that will speak to you and allow you the opportunity to understand how to be an evangelize other people. Because, again, in Romans 14.1, don't be such a stickler. And I wonder if I need to pull that up. Do you know that scripture? Because let me just tell you, it blesses me to read it. Showing no. off. He's showing off, Sperry. Yeah, I'm showing I'm off. Sorry. 14 1. I think we yeah. need to just, just, just hear it because <laughs> what's going to happen is, and this is the King James. Look what it says Him that is weak in faith receive ye, but not to doubtful disputations wow now watch this that's confusing to me oh well no doubt no doubteth hold on <laughs> well I obviously seriously don't know what it means it's confusing to me i don't know god has god has other bibles for me that's why i'm doing this in terms of a, that, that's why i'm doing this to show you a different translation this is the very same scripture in the Message Bible. Welcome with open arms, fellow believers who do not see things the way you do. And don't jump all over them every time they do or say something you don't agree with. Rightfully discerning the body. Yeah. Even when it seems that they are strong on opinions, but weak in the faith department, remember, they have their own history to deal with. Treat them gently. Isn't that awesome? Hey, that's a mouthful. And yeah. but that's the that same scripture. Awesome. You see, sometimes you got to speak to me in English, not Greek translated to English that is word for word with no soul. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No feeling. People, uh, of course, I know you know this. Are so stuck on the King James, uh, and of course, that's the Bible that Jesus and Paul used. But you know, they're really <laughs> stuck on. It. I don't really use that Bible much uh, occasionally, but I'm like you. I use all sorts of Bibles, and usually, if I want to kind of be in line with the other people that use that, I'll use the New King James. Amen. There is, I mean, and, and what I'll do, like, if I heard this scripture, someone, or if I was to say, just picking up the message Bible to read it, and I was reading the stories, because to me, it's really, 
the stories told like a story in plain English when you start doing these translation, uh, paraphrase translations. So I'll get the paraphrase translation and I'll stop and say, wow, this is speaking to me in a loud voice. What I'll do now is take and dissect it with the King James. I always go back to the King James. And I can take every word in the King James or the amplified even, because it's even more expounded upon there. And yeah, I use amplified make too. sure that it's saying what I'm hearing. Because in certain cases, I've read the message translation and said, wait a minute. That's not ringing with me. And I'll go back to the King James, and it's absolutely not what it says. You know, wow. like, like the faith of Jesus Christ, you know, the faith. And they change it. No, you have to believe, you know, your belief in Jesus Christ, you know, it, your faith, you know. Wow. So it, it's just I, I absolutely realize that ultimately, like Nicodemus had to be told by Jesus, that which is spirit is spirit. That which is words on a page written by a man are words on a page written by a man. You know, oh, it, yeah. it's exactly how you receive that word. And that's why Jesus said, it's beneficial for you that I leave. It's beneficial right. that I leave. Beneficial. Yeah, because there's no way I can communicate this at the way you need it communicated to as one person on the whole planet, like I did with 12 other guys that it took them forever and they were still duh, disciples. So, you know, it's like, listen, this is the way it works. That's the plan. God, God made the plan, not me. That's why it's not God in one person, not God in two people, but God in three people. That's why it's a trinity. And, you know, this is a purpose for this. And, and it's not my leaning on my understanding and that, that's really what it boils down to so anyway i think we killed this subject big time <laughs> we started with repentance and changing your mind and getting a change of the way you look at things and perceive things and we ended up with cultivating good relationships hallelujah <laughs> so um this is again uh, been a great, uh, uh, hopefully a great revelation for, for some of you out there that are going to be able to glean something from the ideas of why people aren't bearing fruit. And, and there's fruit problem, there's a root problem, hallelujah. And, uh, uh, and, and Jesus is the way, the truth, and the light, and that love, which is him, is a root issue. And that is really where this whole thing is about, getting to the root cause of why you're not bearing fruit and knowing that repentance is the key and recognizing that repentance comes by the love of God who leads man to repentance. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So Amen. with that, it's 8.07. I'm going to go ahead and close out the message and get it recorded up. I'm sorry I'm a little late getting the other past teachings uploaded. I've been on the road, and I'm, I'm going to get them up there as soon as possible. But uh, praise God. Well, so, uh, well, I'll check in. I guess everybody will. I'll check in tomorrow to see whether you don't have it or you do have it. Of course, I'm going to be watching that hurricane because we're going to get effects from it in Central Florida too. You know, they're saying all kinds of wacky things. I mean, because right now, again, it's really early. All you get is everyone's, I mean, it's like a hundred different different lines that they track these things. Yeah. One says it goes, hits Florida, comes back around, bounces into North Carolina, and then comes full circle back down through the channel again and hits Florida for a second time. So, I mean, yeah. there's all different kinds of things they're saying. Yeah, that generally speaking, that would would not be likely. Of course, they don't have it all together with these hurricanes, but uh, that probably wouldn't be likely. Well, that that's what happened with Enrique, the one that I went to. It, yeah, was, it, it, was, it was clear past the Bahamas, and they thought yeah. it was done. And then all of a sudden, woo, yeah. it came. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it does happen. Well, Char Charlie went over on the Gulf, and they weren't expecting it, and it turned right in in Punta Gorda. They didn't expect that. That's right. That's right. They're even having some effects from it in Phoenix. Really? Believe it or not. Yeah, what that's this? what they're saying. I don't know. Because yeah. Phoenix's monsoon season is over. <coughs> 
And now because of the change of the atmosphere, it doesn't just stay where it's at. It changes the atmosphere everywhere. So now Phoenix has got all <laughs> kinds of rain. and Yeah, I think the, um, Chinese, the Chinese talk about the flapping of a butterfly's wings. It can change everything. You know? <laughs> so, but okay. I guess, you know, that's true. <laughs> it's going to have an effect somewhere. All right. Thank you, Jesus, for this time once again. And we close now and just know that we're looking again always as we listen to your word, as we hear your teachings, as we reflect on these and meditate, not for information, but revelation. Thank you, Lord, for revelation that we may walk in the spirit and walk not by sight and recognize your substance of faith that we can move forward in blind reception of everything you have to give us in jesus name we pray amen amen all right guys god bless you we'll see you tomorrow god bless you yeah. we'll see you tomorrow if you're not flying around somewhere if i'm not, if I'm not like dorothy yeah, yeah. <laughs> no wow. seriously take care stay out of the way kurt oh well. yeah, both of you all right guys take care bye-bye